right that's the start of the Coswell way that stone there and I believe this plaque on the floor as well but what a cool place right at the side of this this is an old market hall looks look at this 1620 I'll show you inside 1627 this was built how amazing is that man I love history and if you look outside all the stonework on these buildings it's a traditional mark if you like of the Cotswolds this is the traditional sandstone that most of the buildings were made from right onward and upwards okay a little bit more about the Cotswolds way it starts here where I am now at the minute Chipping Camden it heads all the way south 102 miles to Bath I'm looking at doing it in four and a half days which shouldn't be an issue my first stop I'll forget the name of it <laughs> I'll tell you later but it's about 18 mile day for me this first day is about 18 mile so nothing too dramatic I did stay in Chipping Camden last night at a, a pub up the road I'll show you when I get there that's where I stayed last night Volunteer Inn <clears throat> and I've got to be honest it was really really lovely stay huge breakfast this morning Cotswolds Way up here but I haven't had a pretty crap experience if I'm honest but I'll go into that a bit later on when we get out of town you probably can't make that out see that blue sign my camera won't zoom in it's broke it's uh, Graham Green lived here 1931 to 1933 it's another thatched cottage here look I think I'm going to be seeing quite a bit of this on my travels well my first high spot of the day this is Dover's Hill and that's pretty much looking north bit misty and grey at the minute <clears throat> right where do I go over here I've made it to uh, Fish Hill Picnic Place I don't know, two, three mile maybe This is the Cotswolds Trail look, as you can see I am currently here That's Chipping Camden, where I left this morning And that's where I'm looking to get to tonight, Winchcombe, which is about 18 mile It's well across a busy road I bet that would be a lovely view in the summer, well not in the summer, on a clear day which I don't have never mind that is Broadway Tower with a bit of luck there'll be a story ball but I don't know whether we're allowed to go through the actual grounds, I don't know but it was built sometime in the 1700s, if I remember. And bless them, they've got a, lest we forget, flag flying from the top look. Good on them. Right, let's see if we can get a closer look. 
Well, that's as close as I'm getting to that. As nice as it is. Roadway tower. That's about four mile in at the minute. Right, a bit more to my, well I won't say disaster, but it wasn't good. <laughs> my journey down yesterday, I planned this the night before, well no, about two nights before, and I decided to travel down on Sunday, I thought it'll be quieter, start my hike Monday morning. I'm on a budget, and uh, it was a three, three, three trains and a bus. The bus takes you from Stratford-upon-Avon to uh, Chipping Camden. The Route 50 of the buses. I, checked, I went, did it all on Google. I downloaded the Stagecoats app, typed yesterday's date in for the bus timetable, which I got, and I picked the 1422 bus from Stratford-upon-Avon, which terminates in Chipping Camden. I thought, I'll not buy a ticket now, I'll pay on the day in case I, something happens and I'm late. So then I arranged all my train timetables so I could get to Stratford-upon-Avon about half past one, which I did. Then I spent 10, 15 minutes walking around Stratford-upon-Avon trying to find the bus stop because there's, there's bus routes all over this place. Anyway, I found it, Route 50 at the bus stop. I looked on the board Monday to Saturday's timetable and Sunday's timetable. This is to Chipping Camden, Route 50, Chipping Camden. 1440, 1422, I thought, bingo. So I had a little walk around there till the bus came, got on the bus. I said, how much to Chipping Camden, mate? He says, we don't go to Chipping Camden. I says, well, I've just got the app. It says that you do, this is Route 50, isn't it? He says, yeah. I said, in the bus timetable, in the bus stop there says it says it does says yeah well we do through the week but we don't on a Sunday <laughs> what? I said well where? I said well where does this bus go to then he says it goes to Chipping Norton I'm like nowhere on the bus timetable did it mention Chipping Norton so I said okay how, how far away is that from Chipping Camden he said oh it's a bit of a way I mean it's not the driver's fault I mean he was, he was really helpful so cut long story short I got the Chipping Norton oh I did say to him I says I've never heard of Chipping Norton, it could be a tiny little village or it could be a decent sized town. I says, is there any chance of getting a taxi from there? He goes, oh yeah, there's a few taxi firms in. I said, okay. So I got to Chipping Norton, got a taxi. Well, actually I booked, an, I went online and got an Uber, 30 quid. I thought, all right, yeah, it's Sunday, 17 mile it was. But it weren't for 50 minutes and I thought, I've fell for this before. You wait like 40 minutes, then it comes on again. Ah, uh, uh, connecting you to another driver, and it just keeps going around. I've, I've had this in America. I thought, no, I'm not sitting here for 40 minutes, then sitting for another and not getting one. So I thought, sod it, I'll bite the bullet and get a taxi. So I got a taxi. Nice taxi driver, 65 quid. With it being a Sunday. <laughs> so, I mean, I bit the bullet, it is what it is. Uh, I'm just telling you this in case anybody else is out there watching this with a view. I've got a nice view here. I'll show you this in a minute. Uh, with a view to coming through on a Sunday and starting Monday. The bus, you can't get a bus down to Chipping Camden on a Sunday. But if you come any other day of the week and you don't want to stop in Chipping Camden, that little picnic area I walked through, Fish Hill, is it Fish, Fish something just back there? Plenty of places to camp there. The toilet there, benches, everything. And you can also camp unofficially obviously but there's camping there and that's about three mile out of town 
Right, I think this town's called Broadway. If it isn't, I'll put a thingy underneath, but nice little view. I've got to go through here. Not right through it, I go into it and then come out of it again. So, if there's a little shop I pass it, I might grab a, a bottle of orange or a Diet Coke or something. Right, let's have a look at it. Now that's something you're not going to see much of these days. Looks like that roof's getting rethatched. How about that? Brilliant. That's Broadway down there. Lovely village, but man, they wanted £4.50 for a bottle of pop. I'm like, yeah, all right. I'll stick to my water. So I'm heading cross country now, up, uh, getting a bit, gaining a bit of height up here. My next stop, if I take it, well, the next town I'm going to hit, well, village, not really a town, is Stanton, and that's about four miles. So I'll have a walk through there. I might have a sit down if there's a bench. I'm gonna drink a water or something. I don't think I'll be eating today until I get to uh, to my final stop tonight in Winchcombe, the damn breakfast I've had. That'll see me well tonight. Right, my first stop of the day. This is Stanton. It's nice and quiet. I'm at about about 11 mile, I think. I should have stopped before now. I mean, it's not it's not hot, but I'm starting to get a little bit lightheaded because this is the first drink I've had since I've left my accommodation this morning, which is not smart. But what's new? I always do it, don't I? I always do it. Yeah, so I'm having a little water. I'm enjoying it so far, it's easy. It's not 12 o'clock yet, and I've only got another six or seven miles. What, thicker? Yeah, about seven miles. Six and a half, seven miles left. I can't get into my accommodation well, three o'clock, so. Slow down. Just one thing that bloody app, you know, the, the weather app. The Met Office app. Shite. It's showing bright sunshine all day today and look I've not seen sun at all. So the best views that I've had coming in, you know, where I thought I'd have a view that I could show you. It's been a really dull and in clouds, so 
never got anything. But I can't talk about the weather. <laughs> you know, so yeah, I'm enjoying it so far. It's really easy. It really is easy. So I shall finish up this water and then I shall carry on, but uh, at a slower pace, take a few more breaks maybe. This was something that I wanted to see, Hales Abbey. But it, it's all padlocked up and it's shut. It's got a big great scaffold around it, look. So, yeah, not today, Al. Oh well. Used to be an old church there. Right, that's the White Hart. I think I go in there to check in. Let's have a look.
Good morning, welcome to day two. I'm just leaving Winchcombe. Really nice day last night. I'm heading for Birdlip today. And I can't remember the exact, I think it's 22 or 23 a mile, I can't remember exactly. But it's definitely chillier. Probably because there's no clouds in the sky, so that suits me. You can see we may be getting a, uh, a sunny day today with a bit of luck. Yeah, definitely a chillier morning. We've got frost on the floor. Looks like being a nice day though. That's looking back down into Winchcombe, where I stayed last night. Really nice climb out that. Right, Bella Snap Long Barrow. If you want to read it, you can pause it, but basically this is over 5,000, 500 year old. And it's an old burial chamber. Five thousand, five hundred year old, eh? Wow. I said earlier that uh, I thought Birdlip was about 23 miles, it's 21. I've just been looking on my list. It's about 21 mile, not 23. I think I'm staying at the George Hotel, I can't remember. But I was having a look on my maps last night and it is literally the only thing in Birdlip is the George Hotel. Nothing else. <coughs> so I've stocked up on food. <coughs> Went to Morrison's last night, back in Winchcombe and stocked up on plenty of food in case I don't fancy to get a meal in the hotel <coughs> but as I said earlier it's a bit a uh, bit more chilly which I'm fine with looks a bit grey behind me but over to the east the sun doesn't look so bad but it looks like it's going to be cloudy again but hey, whatever Really enjoying the trail so far, it is easy. I've got to admit that, it's not difficult at all. The signposting's really good. Here, look. Just come out of this field. But it is a national trail, so you'd expect that. I've not seen another soul since I started my hike. But then it is the middle of November, so. <laughs> Now I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these videos. I say videos because I'm thinking of doing one video a day. The video I did yesterday was 20 minutes. And as I said earlier, this is a four and a half day hike for me. So I may do a daily blog, vlog, like I did with my Dales Way and Cumbria Way videos. I'll see. If not, I'll just have to edit some out and make it into one or maybe two. <coughs> right, this is my uh, view going forward. A lot of today is going to be quite high up. I think I'm definitely the first person to hike down this trail today or up this trail. My face is getting covered in damp cobwebs. <laughs> Bloody things.
if you've seen my Mogi on rim trail videos there were a portion of that where I really needed a right handed glove <laughs> and look at this a right handed glove the trail gods must think I still need one look all on its own just sat there <laughs> oh they're still looking after me blessed of So what a cash I could really do with guys, you know, big, I don't know, 10 grand or something, just in a box. <laughs> Wow, look at this big old boy. I wonder how old he is. Big old beech tree. In fact, there's a few of them down this bit of a road, look. Would you look at that? Another one. Another right handed glove. And that's, by the way, that's not the same one. I'm bloody miles away. That's a carry mall, that. The other one were in North Face. I don't believe this. The trail gods are still throwing right handed gloves at me. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, this is starting to freaking freak me the hell out. This is weird as shit. There's not, it's on its own. There's no, there's no left on the glove anywhere. And it's just there like that. That's three. You have got to be kidding me. 
the hell is going on here? For those, for those that don't know what I'm what I'm talking about, I'll uh, I'll tell tell I'll tell tell later when I get somewhere a bit quieter. It's, it's a bit windy here. Man, this is freaking me the hell out. I tell you, what the effing hell is going on here? I've just come across, as you know, three bleeding gloves, trail gods and all that kind of, you know, stuff that I usually laugh about. And there's a goddamn nun sat on a bench there. This is getting god freaking freaky. A nun. A bleeding nun sat up here on a bit of... God almighty, what is happening? Let me just tell this story. <laughs> I was hoping to find somewhere out at Wind, but I don't think I'm only two miles from where I'm staying tonight, so and it's all downhill pretty much from here. Right, if you thought, oh, why are you freaking out over a couple of gloves and a nun? <laughs> if you've not seen my Mogi on Rim trail video, I'll leave a link in the description, you get a proper story. I'll give you a short version. I was hiking the Mogion Rim and I was doing the Highline Trail from Pine. I forget name it next little place. But I'm following the Mogion Rim literally underneath it. And it was really cold one morning. We, we, we were frosty, snowy, really foggy. So I went to get my gloves on to pack my tent away because my tent had got frost inside. So I always carry gloves even in Arizona because you get a lot of frosty mornings just to pack my tent up because my, my hands would get cold. Well, I've lost one. I've lost my right-handed glove. I'm like... So I packed it away, and my hand was bloody freezing. So I'm walking down the trail, and I've got both my trick, tricking poles in my left hand, and I'm putting my right hand in my pocket, trying to keep it warm, and blowing on it. You know you do, because it was cold. Uh, and there was an ultramarathon on at the same time, and a marathon, so there were runners going past me. Now, there's a, there's a, there is a saying in America, and honest to God, it, it's freakishly true how many times this happens. Not just to me, I've, I've spoke to loads of people and they tell me tells you like, what? And it, and the, the, the saying is, the trail will provide. In other words, if you're really struggling and you need something, the trail will provide it. You'll come across a, a water stash or some somebody, I've got some spare food, whatever, but there's thousands of stories out there. And I'm walking down trail, my, hands, my right hand's really cold, my left hand's not. In the middle of the trail, there's a right hand, a glove. I'm like, what are the... All the years I've been hiking, I, I can't remember coming over a, a freaking, any glove, never mind, one that I wanted. So I tried it and I thought, it's a bloody hell, it's perfect. So that was that. So I told the story in my video, I said, the trail provides, and I'm laughing and joking, you know what I mean? I just thought it was a coincidence. Eh, so of course, I'm, I'm saying, oh, the trail gods are looking after me. I spoke to my daughters, yeah, somebody's looking after me, the trail gods are looking. Because that wasn't the first instance, by the way, there's been quite a few others, but not as sort of obvious when something absolutely went, just went right for me when I was struggling. Uh, and then today I've found three, three right-handed gloves. I mean, that's just freakishly weird. And then I come across a goddamn nun. She's just me and her on, a, on top of this hill. And I'm looking at her, she was praying and then she saw me, so she sat down. And I walked within about 30 yards of her and I was gonna go over and say, just introduce myself. I hope I'm not interrupting my darling, but I've never, I've never met a nun before and I'm surprised to see one right up here. You, you, you know, what's going on sort of thing? But my head say, yeah, but what if she says I've been sent to collect you? I'd be like, no, so I just got out of Dodge. I got out of there sharpish. I thought, no, not today, brother. <laughs> yeah, it kind of freaked me out. So I've calmed down a bit now. <laughs> Three gloves, so that's four right hand the gloves I've found on the last couple of trails. I I've said this before, I could do with a couple, you know, a couple of big bundles of cash light, but that's not happened yet. <laughs> uh, yeah, so yeah, I'm two miles away from Birdlip, so I shall probably show you the uh, accommodation when I get down there. So yeah, if I live that long, I might have, she might be stalking me. <laughs>
there is my accommodation for tonight right let's go and have a look good morning welcome to day three that was a great stop it's absolutely huge inside big extension we well, can see there look, look at the side great big extensions it goes right to the back rooms were enormous had a meal last night in there I skipped breakfast because it was extra trying to watch my budget right let's see what we've got today as I said I'm just leaving Birdlip I'm heading for Dursley which is a, a lot bigger town when I'm staying the night again Dursley's about just over 22 miles so similar day to yesterday although I'm a bit earlier this morning but I did enjoy that stay I really did posh place <laughs> like I say I skipped breakfast because it wasn't part of the deal it was uh, that was extra so I decided to have an evening meal last night rather than breakfast I'm not a big breakfast eater I mean I do enjoy them but I, I, at my age I don't find room to, to put them <laughs> well it said that brilliant app I've got you know the uh, the Met Office app going to be misty this morning which it is so that's something they've got right and then around 10 o'clock 12 o'clock ish it's going to be bright sunshine yeah so we'll see. Right, see in a bit. I'm about four mile in and I've literally been in woods in eight well more than one wood but all morning four mile of walking through wood and this is the next one still misty a bit of open fields for once that that's a raven, that's not a crow. You won't see him, but he's up in that tree there. I say one thing for the wildlife in the Cotswolds, that's about six ravens I've heard and seen. Quite a few buzzards. I've also seen five red kite as well. So yeah. But no, that's not a crow, that's a raven. It's telling me to go left. Oh, right. <laughs> this is nice. I like Painswick, very posh. I think we're coming to some open fields now. Let's have a look. Oh yeah. Yep.
That is Hairsfield Beacon. Now I'm going to call this video here. I'm just short of halfway. I'm at around 50 mile. It's still a bit misty down in the bottom look because we'd have some we would have some really good views from here, I'm pretty sure. It drops right down. Sun's blazing a little bit through the cloud look. Through the mist. Yeah. So I'm at around 50 mile of the trail. And like I say, I'm gonna do two videos. So this is literally pretty much halfway, two and a half days. I'm not sure what the elevation is of this. I'll stick it, I'll stick it below. I'll have a look later. So yeah, that's me done for this video at any rate. I shall literally I shall literally be starting the second video as soon as I've stopped this, so you ain't got long to wait. <laughs> if you have watched this and you've enjoyed it, well, watch the second one because I'm sure it's gonna be pretty much of the same. I'm really enjoying it. It's really hilly, this first bit's a, a lot hillier than what I gave, gave it credit for. First day, not so bad, but yesterday and today, very, very hilly, really steep. Not big hills, but a lot of them, and they're really, really steep. <laughs> yeah, so my, uh, my glutes, my glutes are feeling it at the minute. So yeah, like I say, halfway in for the thingy, for the trail, and I'm about halfway in, maybe just short of halfway for the day. Like I say, I'm heading for Dursley. Well, I'll tell you all that in the next video. You don't need to do it now. So anyway, thank you for watching. Hope you're enjoying it. And uh, I shall carry on. Take care, everybody.